it's very important for me to talk uh, to youngsters to talk about STEM primarily, science, technology, engineering, and math, and what the Corps of Engineers is doing to partner with the schools. Uh, what is the importance of the STEM program? Well, first, uh, we have a challenge in our country is STEM. Uh, today, uh, approximately four out of 100 graduates will have a STEM degree. Uh, in 2020, which may seem like a long time from now, but you all will be alive and in the workforce, uh, we will need 2.8 million STEM uh, individuals, graduates, in you know, jobs that will be, become available. And in order to meet that, we'll need a million more college graduates with STEM backgrounds, a million more. So, so, so that's part of why I'm here, because we have to start now to aggressively encourage uh, youngsters that have an interest, a background, an ability to do STEM studies to, to continue to keep that door open. Hi, um, what role do you see video productions playing in the STEM program? I think they, they play a huge role because what's very important in STEM is the communication of what our STEM challenges are in the nation. Did you, did you know some of the facts that I talked about here today? Probably not, and most of America does not know. And your peers will not know, unless you're going to record this and show it to them. But uh, <laughs> you're, you're shaking your head. <laughs> okay. But, but I, I think communications and how you communicate. I was the head recruiter for the Army, and I learned about marketing and advertising and how we can use the digital tools that we have in order to spread the word on any topic. What should a student do uh, to have a successful career as an engineer? Well, first, I'd say to be successful in, in anything in life, in my view, you have to have passion. In order to get through a STEM program, it takes hard work and studies. And you can't be distracted uh, while you're going into college with partying or social life. Uh, not that you have to be, you know, asocial. You know, you want to have fun, but you want to focus on your schoolwork because it's going to take great discipline just to do the homework. Uh, you really won't be able to fake it. So you, you either have the answer or you don't. You, and you did the problem sets or you didn't. So, so hard work and, and that's the kind of discipline you learn, I think, in, in high school. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges you've had as an engineer? I would say that as I've, I've become more senior in, in government and in the military, some of the, the, the types of challenges that we've had to wrestle with in our engineering effort are, are somewhat unique in the military. I was responsible for $18 billion worth of reconstruction uh, efforts in Iraq, for example. Some of that reconstruction was pipelines, uh, it was water, it, it was building sewage treatment plants, it was building power plants, but it was doing all of that under fire, uh, doing it in a combat zone. The other challenge is, is doing it uh, in a disaster. Uh, last year we had three major disasters, and some you may have heard of, like Hurricane Sandy, where the Corps of Engineers was directly uh, involved in unwatering the city. We had to unwater 475 million gallons of water from the tunnels and from the buildings <coughs> in New York City, from the Amtrak station. Uh, we had to unwater the, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. They emptied it in nine days, 85 million gallons. Take a football stadium like the Rose Bowl and fill it up with water. That's how much water was in this town. I frankly did not know how we were going to get it done but it was folks like the Coast Guard, the Navy, the Mass Transit Authority, and the Corps of Engineers uh, working federal and non-federal partners, teamwork and leadership that got it done. Uh, 